All right, I had to take off my power stroke cover, twisted off my bolt here. So I got that off. There's a sensor plug that comes off of this right here and this bracket needs to come off. I do wanna mention if you're uh, climbing up and down a lot like I am, these uh, four cylinder blocks together is a great step. Finally feel safe getting up and down because it's the single cylinder block on top of another is like very unbalanced. I'm gonna show you everything still kind of semi-installed. Um, this is a really easy nut to release. This thing right here that's black is just rubber. Uh, the other lines to it are the same. So right down here you can see I'm shining these two lines uh, right next to each other there and they're disconnected and they also have rubber on them. Um, and then also there is a, uh, a sensor back here. You see the yellow. Let's see if I can show this to you here. Um, the yellow harness right here which you squeeze from the sides like that to get off and then there's the drain hose just pulls off in a direction towards the cab like that and that comes right off the drain cock and then um, oh yeah and then there's the two the two 13 millimeter bolts one here one here and I disconnected the exhaust back pressure sensor line or actually wait this is it right here the purple and that's the sensor right there but that helps you get to it a little bit easier and then that's got to get disconnected anyway we interrupt our regularly scheduled programming to bring you this very interesting tidbit of wisdom uh, do you see how this has two holes in the back that each have an o-ring okay um, this bottom hole is where the stuff is supposed to come out, okay? So, basically, you turn this little handle and it rotates a plastic ball inside there. You can see the hole. I can't really rotate this while I'm holding the camera, but um, the trouble with mine was that the inner rim here on the inside area uh, where this pick is, I'm going to draw the circle right there, is just a very thin piece of plastic. And what happened was some clown decided to take a grinder to this. I don't know what he was trying to achieve, but he achieved something that he didn't intend and it was a leak. So to compensate for the leak, um, and by the way you can see that there's a certain depth from uh, this flat right here to these flats okay and you'll also see that the o-rings if you look at it from the side they do not protrude very much if at all okay so this in effect is supposed to be elevated above the screw holes to each side of it some moron decided to grind this to improve the o-ring sealing surface thereby lowering the positionality of the surface that was to mate with the o-ring thereby creating a leak. To solve that leak, they cranked down on these things like a son of a gun or put an oversized o-ring or some jackhole behavior like that and broke off this little plastic rim inside here resulting in a leaky whatever this thing is valve, drain valve. So now I have a new drain valve, very expensive piece of plastic here. Take better care of it, jeez. Common sense, man. But yeah, I just got by with using like some JB Weld and sort of made it where it was halfway usable. But if it's really messed up like that, you can just jam up this hole and the drain hole and then, um, you know, and then all you have to do is, uh, you know, uh, blow this top out, take that top off and just blow it out with air every time you want to get your water and fuel light to come off. But that, I think that's retarded and this thing is like ridiculous, like $500, $800, something stupid like that. So you really don't want to do that. You really want to just treat it better. So I'm going to put this new kit on here. I got some nice new screws with it and we'll be good to go. thought you guys would appreciate a reminder that the, uh, the two stud type bolts are the back two here. Those are the ones that hold up the uh, power stroke bracket sign. All right, let's see how messy this becomes. Oh, it becomes quite messy indeed. It becomes quite messy. 
But you know, I'm just going to let the oil go down into the valley because that's where all, it was all destined to go anyways. And look, there's a big seal and a strainer. That's smart. That's the gear that drives it. It's not timed because it's a Huey system, so it just exercises uh, valve operations to put oil pressure behind the diesel fuel. Um, see these lines? They go to the high pressure pump, and there's a sensor wire right there. You got to be careful with that, but that's got a wire sort of clip thing that flips over. I'll show it to you again. All right, this cart part could be a little bit hard to show you, but you're taking out two eight millimeter bolts. They go into the, the holes on this plate right there. But before you do that, you have to unscrew something from this very rusty exhaust fitting. Um, I'm gonna show you the line here. Let's see, all right, there's the line under my index finger. Sorry, it's not in focus, but you gotta unscrew that and be careful not to wreck the bracket because it's really fragile and it'll wreck easy if you try to twist that that other nut off, that line nut off. This looks like it, they used some kind of silicone. Something to bear in mind. When you when you get that off, now you have access to the nut that holds that, um, that gear in place. All right, sometimes it's the judicious use of magnets. So, I slid the sleeve up my heavy lift magnet and I s it allowed it to fit inside there to capture that washer. And then when I loosened up the bolt, it was pretty much loose enough to turn with just this. There we go. Okay, I should show you this. Um, these fittings right here aren't like a thread-on fitting. They, they kind of just push in and push out. And there's a separator tool that looks like a fork, um, but some guy online said use a flathead. So what I did was I stuck my flat, two flatheads at a time, one as far back as I could this way, you know, in there, and then I twisted it like that, but I had to have a second one going in as far to the front as I could, and I twisted that one as well. And it reached a point where it wanted to come off, I could tell. And so I took one of my hands off the screwdriver and I just kind of pushed it and it popped off. Uh, I'll let you know if these leak. I think there's a 50-50 chance these will leak. Oh yeah, I forgot to forgot to mention I got this wire plug off so that was not hard to get. You just flip that wire back and then unplug it. Man, Ford did a great job making their wire plugs back in these days. And for this uh, bolt right here, I have that a wobble and then like a short extension like three inch and then just a regular size ratchet here for loosening that. Uh, it's going to be a quarter inch uh, socket wrench with a short extension and a, sh a long um, or a deep socket and then an extension with a 13 mil to uh, use as leverage for loosening that up. There's not enough room in there for really a bigger ratchet to work. Once it's loose, it's pretty loose. I got my pump off and uh, I recommend that you guys take a rag to it and immediately wipe it down before you do anything else because I think these cracks right here are cracks and they're not supposed to be there. part of the video I basically got the whole thing back together uh, and I could not get the truck to start um, I was cranking there was no smoke coming out of the exhaust pipe which means there was no fuel uh, coming out of the injectors uh, which probably means there was no uh, high pressure oil so I went through the trouble of pressure testing my oil rail at the ICP 
sensor where that screws in and it was uh, low pressure and I thought man what in the world maybe there's something wrong with the pump I awakened a, a sleeping problem or something like that and uh, spent an extensive period of time trying to start the truck repeatedly I had it on jumpers uh, hooked up to my other truck and I cranked it for 20 seconds at a time probably a good 10 or 20 times and it would not start and uh, the answer is just to go back in there and find the mistake that you made so if that's happening to you um, I mean I guess my best advice would be just try to retrace your steps and see what you did maybe you made a mistake hopefully that's all it is hopefully you can trace your mistake and figure out what it is but mine I spent half a day working on this trying to figure it out and then I I came home and I took the thing apart and I got some more specific instruction for the check ball and um, that, that solved it. So uh, it was an extremely frustrating experience trying to start the truck and cranking it and cranking it and not getting any results and I just had to tear back into it. That was the only way to fix it. This guy is called your non-serviceable plug. You get this little plastic ball and I'm going to try to show it to you, but I put it in there and now it's, it's glued in. It's down there at the bottom of the chamber. And see, the thing about this is that this port hole right here is actually for the IPR, which is a very important gizmo, okay? And then the non-serviceable port is, is over here from the side. Now, the bar on this thing is intended to keep that ball down underneath it. So looking at it from up up top here, I'll start it for you. So you can see that bar right there actually prevents the ball from coming out into this area here. When I was cleaning this and stuff, I didn't know where the ball was. I couldn't see it. And so I thought it was really stuck in there good. So I just swapped out this plug and then I swapped out this plug and I looked down this hole and the ball was on you know my side of that pin like on this side up, up on top of it and I was like huh well that's weird maybe it maybe it does something with the tip of this you know or something but it doesn't that's what that's what I did wrong so hopefully this will allow my truck to start now I was only getting uh, 250 psi wanted to show you guys this. I put my pump in there and this gear has to be lined up really good. Before you tighten up the bolt in the center of it, the center bolt goes to 95 foot-pounds, but I put in the two bolts that mount the pump first, made sure everything was good with the gasket. I installed these and then I put in, which didn't matter, but then I put in the bolt to this which has a washer and that's got to get seated properly or that could be cause you problems but you can check where it's mated uh, if you're clever you'll be able to tell if it's on there right um, there's this little cover down here you can see that bolt and then there's another one like it those hold on the bracket that holds the sensor which is the exhaust back pressure sensor if your tube is old you could twist it off which would be bad but I have a nice new tube on it you can really block off that tube and it doesn't matter as long as you put the delete pedestal in, but that's a matter for a whole different video, different person, different problem. Yeah, so I put, I had custom lines made at the hydraulic shop. I don't know if these are gonna work okay, but I'm trying to route them right now. They're a little stiff and they have these huge elbows on them. So I'm gonna make them work because the lines I had were cutting my hands up like crazy and they were probably, actually one of them was leaking because I was trying to, uh, I was trying to make the truck start earlier and it wasn't starting for me. So uh, here we are. And I'm just going to put this reservoir on there now, and um, then the filter housing goes to that. Oh yeah, I meant to tell you guys, that cover right here, I don't know if it has like some kind of a foam seal or something, but it had a bunch of silicone in mine. So I took it off, and I cleaned it off really good, and then I put new silicone, because that's what I have on hand. So it looked like it might have been set up for an O-ring, but I didn't have that. So, and then you got to be careful of this seal right here. Make sure this isn't pushed out or anything like that when you're installing this. Alright guys, so I got my truck running. Um, 
turns out that little ball was the main problem. Yeah, I mean the job was just frustrating because these uh, these stock lines have like these razor sharp little metal metallic spikes sticking out of them. And it sliced up my backs of my hands and stuff because I was digging around in there earlier trying to figure stuff out. Um, I went through all the trouble of having a high pressure gate liquid filled gauge all set up. I got an adapter and a line made at the hydraulic store and I didn't even use it. I just did the check ball thing and it, it solved everything. I mean I could have I could have not even struggled today at all, but I just I got frustrated. I retook the pump off a second time. So there is a write-up on how to do that check ball, but I definitely encourage you to get the master kit if you're going to rebuild or reseal the uh, high pressure pump because the master kit comes with that ball. So if you lose that ball or you don't know where it was supposed to be when you took it apart and you lose it, you can have a spare, which is what happened with me. I didn't install the new ball because I couldn't, I couldn't figure out how to get the old ball out. And uh, when I put everything back together, it was wrong. So anyway, um, I still have to test drive the truck, but I'm going to do a quick inspection for oil leaks underneath. Yep, it's just diesel. Looks good. So this is a topic mentioned from time to time on power stroke forums and online. And you just can't make any mistakes like I made with that little check ball. Um, they don't really give you instructions on the sheet. This is the sheet that you get. It just shows you shows you what it looks like, but it doesn't show you where the ball goes in the orientation. It goes beside that bar, not in front of it. That bar just holds it into a into a uh, a seat, basically. I did want to mention I discovered this gasket, which is the the high pressure pump gasket, flat as a pancake. I mean. When you first, when you get the new gasket, you can feel like a, a very big raise around all these areas right here. Um, these areas right here are, are fat and thick and wide and it creates a seal, okay? But the rubber kind of compresses and squishes and then once it does, I guess it's the end and you have to take the pump off and reseal everything, you know? And I just wish that a mechanic would have just cleaned out the valley and stuck a rag in there like I did, and they would have identified this leak right away. Um, and I've been to two different mechanics. One mechanic told me I needed a rear main seal and an oil pan, and I paid out pretty good money on that. I think I paid $1,000 or less for the whole thing, all told. And then I had another mechanic who was supposed to solve a different problem, and he probably cost me a good couple hundred dollars worth of time towards an oil leak that was allegedly coming out of the uh, dipstick um, in the dipstick tube where it goes into uh, into the oil pan. And those things might have been leaking a minuscule amount of oil, but the oil was coming, I mean, the volume of oil that was coming out of this truck was the same after all those repairs. And I was the one who cleaned out the valley. I took a, a, a dry, wet vac to it. I cleaned it out. I sucked up all the debris. I sprayed a bunch of engine uh, degreaser on there and wiped it all out with rags. I wiped it some more. I blew it out with an air compressor. I wiped it down some more. And then I stuck a white, clean rag on these Scott rags, which are awesome, by the way. And I stuck those down in there to see, is there fresh oil in this spot? Is there fresh oil in that spot? And I found it was coming from somewhere in the vicinity of the high, the, uh, high pressure oil pumps. And uh, the other thing, don't forget to plug in your electrical connectors. There's only like four of them. It can't be that hard. Uh, two of them are interchangeable. The exhaust back pressure system and the IPR, injector pressure regulator. Uh, those two things have interchangeable plugs, but one of the plugs has a really long wire that reaches all the way into the back pressure solenoid, and the uh, the other one had just a short wire that is that is only able to reach the IPR. It cannot reach the other one. So if, if one is plugged in wrong, the other one's not plugged in, basically, unless the whole wiring harness has been ripped apart. Um, so if you're if you have that happen. Then I'll look for a little white tag on the outside of the uh, of the wire loom uh, 
because there's a white tag on the one that goes back to the back pressure valve um, solenoid. So, uh, yeah, I hope it all works out for you, and I hope you enjoy your job a little bit more than I did. Um, if your vehicle won't start, go back, retrace your steps, figure out what happened. All right? Good luck out there.